Hello, I'm Joy, and I am just on a roll here. I'm going to talk to you now about the unpopular opinion that I have that there is no one accurate house system. What? A lot of people have a very clear favorite for themselves, and um, they will really <laughs> fight tooth and nail to prove that it is the one true house system. I do not think that. Um, so what are houses anyways? Um, so basically the idea is that um, the planets are like the energy or the drive that we have to do a particular thing depending on, you know, depending on what planet it is. And it's in a sign and the sign is like how we go about expressing that drive or that energy. And um, then the house system is the area of our lives that is most impacted by it. And even if you don't have a planet in a particular sign or house, each house, like for the most part, like interceptions aside, um, each house is in a sign. So, um, so basically it's like uh, how our placements actually like manifest in concrete ways in our lives. And um, there are a whole bunch of different house systems. I think the most popular ones are full, equal, facetus, porphyry, and um, well, there, there are others, but I, I think those are the most popular ones. Um, porphyry, not as much as the other three, but it's my personal favorite at the moment. So like, I thought I'd throw that in there. And I think it's more popular than say like Campanus or I don't even know if I pronounced that right. Um, so it's, it's one of the more popular ones, even if it's not as popular as like Placidus. So uh, what's the deal with all this anyway, right? So um, in whole, which is like the like old, the super old school, like ancient method, um, basically like if your rising sign, which is, uh, basically like the, like when you, the time that you're born determines what your rising sign is based on like the, Ooh, I should know this. Is it based on the rotation of the earth? I think it might be based on the rotation. Like it, it has to be based on the rotation of the earth because it, it's related to, um, like it, it's rising it's like the horizon right so yeah we're gonna go with that if by the way if i say something that is factually inaccurate please correct me i enjoy learning new things and if somebody can point out um you know information that is useful in all ears so anyways um the ascendant or rising sign is based on when we're born and then you know it goes just counterclockwise around the chart, first house, second house, third house. And um, there are four angles in the chart. There's the ascendant and that's like your demeanor, you know, your general like presentation in life, um, your appearance. Then there's the IC, which stands for some Latin thing that I am not gonna try to pronounce. <laughs> um, and that's your demeanor around the house. It's how you are in private. It's like, um, your role around your home. And then there is your descendant. Ooh, I have another unpopular opinion about the descendant, but depending on who you talk to, either it is what you need out of relationships and often that influences who you're attracted to. Um, people that bring a lot of that kind of energy are attractive to you because it's what you need from somebody else in life or it's your own approach to relationships. I kind of think it's both, but in my case, my experience is that it's much more so the latter. However, I have my North Node conjunct my descendant, so that might have something to do with it. In any case, uh, basically it's either your relationship demeanor or like um, what you need out of relationships, essentially. And um, then the Midheaven is the other, angle and that's like your public image and your professional demeanor 
and um, kind of like the role that you play like in the world at large. So basically some house systems are um, going to divide your natal chart into four parts and then um, use the angles, the ascendant, IC, descendant, and midheaven as um, like, like that decides like where each quadrant is going to be. And then um, for porphyry, what it does is after the angles are determined, it just divides the remaining houses equally within that quadrant. And um, Placidus does not do that. There's some like, I don't know, I think some like crazy calculations they do to figure out um, how large each house should be, but they're not equal. Um, within each quadrant. So then equal basically takes your ascendant and then like each house is an equal size starting at the ascendant. So you're still, unless your ascendant is at zero degrees in a sign, you're still gonna have like, you know, um, like if your ascendant is in Aquarius, you're gonna have a little bit of Pisces in your first house. Um, and then equal just sets the, uh, or I'm sorry, whole signs just sets your houses as being like starting and ending at the cusp of each sign. So your second house is just like zero degrees Pisces in, you know, if you're an Aquarius ascendant. Um, so yeah, so that's how it works. Um, and what I'm trying to get at here is that if there really were one house system that it like is legit, clearly, obviously, always superior to other house systems, the other ones wouldn't exist. People would be like, what? That's some nonsense. Obviously, this other one is accurate. <laughs> you know, like it would um, work in everyone's experience and they would just use that one. The fact that there are so many other house systems means that that is not the case. <laughs> and uh, all right, so why is that not the case? Well, that is a great question. I don't, I do not have that answer. Um, one theory that I've heard that actually kind of makes sense to me is that it has to do with how spiritually developed a person is because I used to really resonate with Placidus and um, then I grew a bunch and now I really resonate with Porphyry. And uh, yeah, I mean, that, that could be a thing. Another possibility is that it depends on how you're using astrology. So some people uh, use astrology to be like, okay, so you've got this planet in this house conjunct this other planet. So like, you're going to have a lot of divorces or like, you're going to inherit a lot of your father's debts or like, you're going to have like health issues of this particular type. Like, they're very, very concrete and literal in how they use astrology. Like 100% all about how things manifest. And um, that is not how I use astrology personally. However, um, it's possible that if you're using astrology that way, a certain house system works better for that than other forms <laughs> or like other uses for astrology. So it could be about like, what you're using astrology for and what you're looking for in the chart. Um, another possibility is that it has to do with where a person is born. So um, one popular thing that I hear people say is that if you're born in a very like northern climate, or I mean theoretically it would be the same for very southern climates too, but like the further away from the equator you were born, the more important it is to use equal or whole because Otherwise, what ends up happening is that the house sizes vary so much that you end up with interceptions and duplications in your chart. And you know what? I'm going to explain that some other time. I'm going to do a whole video just about that. But um, personally, um, like I live in a fairly northern climate. <laughs> and so some of the people in my life have interceptions. Some do not. 
I don't think it's so crazy to say that like people are pretty profoundly impacted by not having a lot of sunlight in their lives for part of the year or for having a lot of sunlight another part of the year like i think that actually like it it's completely plausible to me and uh based on my observations and my experience even extremely likely that that is going to have a pretty profound impact on people and people who are born in like really really northern places like like how many people like that have you known like to me it kind of makes sense that they're gonna have some challenges with interceptions in their charts like that seems legit to me it's all i'm saying like i'm i'm open i'm always open to being wrong about anything but like yep that's it well you know that's not true if i have clarity about something that i should do like i'm not open to being wrong about that like nobody can know my own inner experience except me <laughs> you know so that aside when it comes to like mental stuff basically is what i'm saying um but yeah, I could be wrong. I could always be wrong. So anyways, um, that is another possibility. And um, I'm kind of at a point now where I think that it's valuable to consider multiple house systems. Like, it's because somebody made a comment the other day to me about how in pole signs, my midheaven is in my 11th house. And I, like, didn't know that whole signs are used that way i thought they just like say okay well that was actually your midheaven when you were born like physically but we're just gonna like move it to this magical other place because we want to use whole signs i thought they just like move it to the 10th house cusp um but that's not what this person said and like her comment that um, my midheaven is actually in my 11th house and not my 10th like whoa that actually like makes a little bit of sense like hmm, there's something there However, that puts my moon in my 10th house in whole, and that just does not work for me at all. So, uh, mm, well, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna table that, or, or put it on a shelf and, and uh, think about that later. But anyways, um, basically, do what you wanna do. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. Um, I am pretty firm, that there is not one true house system to rule them all and the other ones are just all completely wrong i i am pretty firm on that but as far as which one to use whatever you want to do <laughs> like whatever resonates with you whatever makes sense to you do that like geez um i'm not here to tell you how to live i'm not the thought police you can believe whatever you want to believe and if you find that a certain house system resonates with you then by all means use that one sheesh um and also like i guess i guess what i would recommend though is to at least consider other house systems and not just assume that just because somebody told you and even made a good case for a particular house system being correct that does not mean that it's actually the best one for you. And um, just because somebody, uh, you know, just because most people use Placidus, that absolutely does not mean that it is the best. Um, it's just the most popular, not the best. <laughs> um, but you know, maybe for you it is the best. So, you know, do your own thing basically is what I'm getting at here. And uh, also I would encourage people to be open to changing your mind at some point because like I said, Placidus used to resonate best for me. Then I grew a whole bunch and um, now Porphyry works best for me. So, you know, it's possible that, you know, right now equal works best for you. And at some point in the future, um, you know, things will change and you'll find that campanus or, you know, whatever is actually a better fit. Um, if you're like super into like, exploring this really fully which is what i did um i suggest actually exploring house dispositors and uh i'm not gonna even like try to explain what that is right now because this video has gone on long enough and it's like not the point of the video but you can google it it's uh d-i-s-p 
Like that's how the word starts, house dispositors. And uh, look up some descriptions, you know, and um, just see what resonates with your experience. Yeah, and uh, that's about it. That is that unpopular opinion that multiple house systems are legit. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs>